Hi and welcome once again to my video. Thank you for coming back. And I just doing this quick update because I just finished putting together the class on editing sunsets. And I want to offer you the first lesson from this short series because there is only four, five uh, videos on editing sunsets. And one of these videos I'm putting now uh, for you for free on YouTube. So if you enjoyed this and if you're a member of my classes on Skillshare, there's also a link on the description if you're interested in more information. And for those of you who actually follow me on Skillshare, uh, make sure to watch other classes because I'm putting a lot of classes on Skillshare all the time, a lot of retouching classes. Re recently, I uploaded the uh, last creation uh, class, a lot of previous retouching classes now editing sunsets. So enjoy the video. And if you're interested in a little bit more information, uh, make sure to check the links in the descriptions. We are going to start very simple. As you can see, I prepared some of the sunset images that we're going to work in this during these lessons. And I'm going to start from this image that you can see in front of you right now. Why? Because it is very simple and I want to start simple. So later on, we can process to the images with different difficulty level, which require a little bit more work. On this image, I want to do work only in the camera roll, because I believe for many images, for simple images, this is absolutely enough. Camera is exactly the same what development panel in a Lightroom is. So there is no difference between these two, how you work, and this could be absolutely enough. And there won't be needed any additional work later in Photoshop. So let's, let's just double hit our raw file and open this in camera. Uh, remember, if you don't work with the raw file, but you have JPEGs, somehow you just need to hit right and then open in camera. So, what you can see right now when you open, you see basic panel. And first of all, I recommend you to check the profiles in camera. So not all of the profiles are good. And Adobe is known for lack of the profiles, I could say. But as, as this is landscape, I assume the landscape profile could work really good. Uh, Adobe Standard is good. Adobe Raw offer uh, the biggest uh, collection over here. But in this case, especially if you work with the landscapes and if you work uh, with the sunset, especially like the landscape will be most uh, juicy, most punchy, uh, will offer you most punchy colors. So this is probably the profile I'm going to um, settle upon. But no matter what you do, just uh, check the profiles. It's very important. We have some more. We'll have some um, artistic profiles which is more like your mobile device filters. You might like them and you might use them. Um, I don't think they will be really useful. Some of them could give you really nice uh, moody effects. And I think for some um, nice and quick work, that could be useful, but it's not good if you plan to work on something really very selective. You want the high quality work. As you can see, a lot of them looks a matte, which looks a little bit more like a presets. But as I mentioned before, I'm going to work here with Adobe Landscape because I like the juicy colors it's giving me. Once you choose the profile, we can uh, close it. So we choose our profile. And then we can start our work with this basic panel. And with every image, whenever I start, I'm trying to work first with the lights. And we have a lot of options um, with the basic panel. We have exposure, the first thing about the lights, but what's most important for me is the highlights and shadows. You see, uh, with the sunsets, you always face a similar issue, uh, which is you see the light in front of you, which means your highlights will be very strong, yet the shadows will be very dark. And we need to work a little bit with this. You can simply bring up the shadows, but you don't want to bring them to 100 because it will not look like really nice artistic um, shadows. So you want to bring them up just a little bit, but not too much to make them too fake. Also, with the highlights, you want to take them down 
just a little bit if you have them too strong, but not fully because as you can see, the details, they, they will not look really nice. So get to the point you feel this image has a good start. And the other options to work with the shadows and highlights is actually tone curve. So at first, let's leave this basic panel here and I'm going to tone curve. And we have the shadows, darks, lights and highlights, which we can split for four elements. So this quarter, shadows, this quarter, darks, lights and highlights. And we can simply bring up more shadows, but decrease the darks here, increase the lights as well and decrease the highlights. That gives me the results that I mostly like and I feel this image already getting better. Other tone curve, you can choose the point tone curve. For example, what I will want to do here is wash out some of the shadows and wash out some of the highlights so I can get this soft matte effect. Why? Because I cut out the highlights over here and I brought up and cut out the shadows over here. And as you can see, this image has this matte outcome right now. Once the lights are sorted, let's try something with the colors. So I'm moving to hue, saturation, luminance, and how does it work? Hue is basically the color you have. So we clearly have a lot of oranges here, a little bit less um, green and not many of the other colors. So the warm colors over here are only ones we're actually going to work here. So let's say you want more red oranges. You change the hue of the color. You want the more yellow, you drag the hue in the different direction. I don't really want to work too much with this, but I want to work a little bit with yellows. I want them to be more orangey. And oranges I will keep as they are just a little bit, maybe this direction. So you'll have this really weird, uh, moody, very red result. Also, I would increase some of the saturation here. I want this to be punchy. I want this to be strong. And we could go more with green, but it's not so much really that we could do something. And the last part is luminance, which is basically the amount of light. So if I take down the light from the oranges, as you can see, they just get dark, not really nice. So uh, for the landscapes, this will not do really well. You can try to do adjust this, but softly, not too much, just for best results. The last color thing I could use here in camera, maybe not the last, but for sure very important is split tunic. In case of we work with the sunsets, or sunrises, you don't really want to add too much for the shadows, which are pretty dull. If I'm going to re add the warm color to the shadows, it's not necessarily natural because the shadows comes from like opposite direction than the sun. And what you want to do, you want the color comes from the direction of the sun. So for the highlights, I'm going to choose warm color and increase the saturation. I'm not going to work with the shadows, if we work with the cold, it could it could actually work, as you can see, warm, not necessarily too flat. So I could go with some blue tones if I want to create some really interesting effect over here. And it does work. Often, I'm not letting the shadows do anything. We can increase the influence on the highlights over here till this level. And this is optimal result that I really like. Um, the simple image, as I said, uh, showing you how to work on the simple image in camera raw. The last point you could want to use is uh, working a little bit with the channels, which is a little bit more complicated over here. So this is in the panel calibration. So let's mention panel basic, tone curve, hue saturation, luminance, split tuning, and as an optional, calibration will be good for your sunsets. Um, what I do here, I can just increase the saturation for all image if I want this to be more punchy, uh, which is very similar to the profiles. So you work with the uh, three color lights, uh, red, green, and blue, and you can work with the hue of each panels. They don't represent colors, but the color lights. So they exist basically everywhere. Um, there is always the biggest amount of reds, a little less, of the greens, but uh, sorry, blues, 
but as you can see they exist uh, in each color and connection of all of them uh, creates the whole image so if you need to make your image make a little bit more saturated this could be the right way uh, to do is I don't do so much work in this panel and as I mentioned before I use it more optional then I can go back to my basic panel if I want to increase some contrasts if I want to increase or decrease some clarity uh, this will be also the way uh, I like the effect that I created which was a little bit washed out so I'm not going with too much with clarity and on a little bit with the contrast and this would be the result I I keep so then the image is ready you could hit open image which I do not recommend to save this uh, we need to of course open this in uh, Photoshop right now and I can see some things I would like to clean up so remember if you have a uh, dirty lens uh, some dirty sensor uh, this is a uh, way to go this was very old camera that's why the dirt is uh, over here it was really after some messy travel so what I do I make sure that I work with Adobe RGB space 16 bits uh, channel everything is okay here okay so hit OK and I open in Photoshop always as a smart object. I'm pressing Shift and open this as an object. So I open this as an object because if I want to change something, I can just double hit now on this object. I'm back in camera if I want to change the adjustments. So I want to create empty layer now. I'm going to name this clean empty layer because I want to work non-destructively. And what I need to do, I'm using healing brush. And with healing brush, I'm trying to remove the dirt that I have on my image. So what healing brush does, it's copying the texture and adjust the color that is around of the mess that you'd like to do. Probably the best cleanup tool you could use, uh, especially for landscapes, healing brush, spot healing brush which is more automatic more intuitive very rarely closed up and at this moment the image is ready if i want to work with the online stuff i would save this for web so i would go to file export save for web and i will find the folder with the images to save it so i'm going to hit save make sure the quality is 100 percent and then I need to find the place of my images, the folder I want to save this. And once I find the folder where I want to save this, I save this. I might change the name a little bit, knowing this is after edit. Hit save and the image is done. So this is how I deal with the simple sunset. And now let's move to more advanced things when will be a little bit more work required.